Perfect. One, two, three. Just give me patience. Yeah. What is up, Z Pack? It's your boy Z Dog MD. Check it out. We are live and direct with Against Medical Advice, a really special episode because today I have a guest who took a very non traditional approach to becoming a doctor and an entrepreneur and an educator and a mother. I have Dr. Andrea Paul with me. Hi. Andrea, thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks. It's really a thrill. So when I heard your story, I was like, you gotta come on the show because you're an in, you trained in internal medicine for a year, then you did pathology, then you kind of did a year of practice in wound care. Right. And then you became an entrepreneur and now educate doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, surgical techs on how they can do better on their on their boards and be better clinicians. How, how, how did this all start? So I think probably when I was a, a resident, when I was when I realized that the way that people were studying was kind of silly. Um, in my pathology residency program, people had like handwritten notes from the previous classes and there's like stacks of paper and filing cabinets and that's how people were studying. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, well that's silly because there's this thing called the internet and we should be using it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so we, we just started creating, or I, I guess I started creating content for just one um, area at that time and ended up expanding that into two and sort of went from there. Just yourself as a medical student? As a resident. As a resident. Yeah. So you, you're already busy in residency and you're like, well, someone's got to do this. So you just went into it and you put it online? Yeah, so we, we put something online and then it started to get a little traction. Um, and then I met my co-founder and we ad added started adding more and more areas and it just kept kind of ballooning from there. So we ended up first in all the medical specialties, the nursing, dental, podiatry, um, various technologists and everything else that we have now. So. so even like surgical techs and things like that? Yeah. And it all grew out of demand because people were like, this is how I learn best? Yeah, I think I think there's a realization that, um, and it's it's been well studied that the more questions you do to prepare for a test, the better your score, and it, regardless of anything else. So regardless of how much you read or how much you, you know, have experienced in practice, it's just that number of practice questions. Um, and then yeah. people enjoy, I think, you know, that being in that same situation where they're answering the question, they're able to see the explanation right away and say, this is what I would do next time, or this is, you know, so it's, it seems to just be a better way to wire it in than it is to, you know, just be reading and not having any assessment. So it's that interactivity with the actual stuff there on the screen that gives you better learning than just seeing it on a piece of paper or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. seems to be. I mean, it's been it's been studied and, and people are doing, doing great. So. It, it makes sense because when I used to study in medical school, some active component of it, if I were highlighting or underlining, even if it meant nothing, mm -hmm. it was that active piece that somehow allowed me to retain better. And yeah. your, your um, thought about the, the research showing that actually doing the test questions is the best way to prep for it, mm -hmm. I think is absolutely valid. And I used to actually, in the old days, I might have worked for a competitor of yours back in the day, building these board questions. Didn't we all? Didn't we all, right? <laughs> and it's interesting because they had a, you know, the, the whole idea that <clears throat> we go through medicine trying to optimize how do we learn medicine. Mm -hmm. And you took a route where you said, okay, I'm gonna do that. It became so big that after a year of practice, you were pulled into actually doing it as a, as a business. Yeah, it, it started out very part-time, um, and then we ended up hiring a lot of writers and, and content editors and expanding, and it, it just became like more than a full-time thing, and that's when I ended up leaving, um, formally leaving clinical medicine. How did that feel? Because when I left full-time practice, there's a part of your identity that is tied up in that. Yeah, I think I was, for me it was, something that I was, I was always passionate about business, so I'd been doing entrepreneurial type things since I was a kid. Um, so that was always in there and it was, I was excited. Um, and I think more of the hesitation was from, like I have a medical family, and so they didn't quite understand like, but this isn't really being a doctor anymore. And so, and then a lot of my friends and colleagues were like, we'll see you back in a few months. You know, that was, yeah. nobody thought it could be, you know, something that lasted. So, um, but I think I always knew this was something that people needed and it was a way to stay involved and stay up, you know, I'm reading and 
been writing on all of these topics, things I never thought I would ever you know learn more. or need to know. No <laughs> so, more medicine than most so clinicians now. I'm, I'm learning a ton, and, and just, it's, it's really rewarding, actually, to have students email after the test and say, you know, I wouldn't have passed, or I could have spent six, ten times as much time studying and away from my family and away from my job, but instead I was able to do it more quickly. So, Do you ever send those emails to your parents? Because I tell you, my dad to this day, what are you doing? You're a professional <laughs> clown. That's not a doctor, okay? You need to put your finger in somebody's buttocks. That's, that's what... <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah, they still think that I'll go... Yeah, One day still, you'll leave. Yeah, 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 it's a yeah. thing. And it's been, you know, it's, this is our fifth year now. So. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> well, you guys are, are huge. And one of the great things is when we connected it, we thought, you know what? We have an audience that, yeah. first of all, your story of, okay, I'm a clinician. I trained as a doctor. I went through the same things you guys did. But mm -hmm. now I want to actually come back and help you do it more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you're affecting more lives through what you're doing because each of these clinicians is going to be better for it. And they're going to yeah. affect thousands of patients each. And so when Board Vitals and uh, ZDog Industries connected, we said, we got to do something to actually get the word out because we can help a lot of people. We did the video, Meet Virginia, mm -hmm. um, for Nurses Week. Yep. And nurses are a big part of your population, right? Because you prepare them for the NCLEX, uh, yep. APRN uh, cert exams, mm -hmm. uh, those sort of things. Yep. So we came up with the premise. We put it out, and the idea was you guys would throw a party for nurses. Yeah. And we did it at the hospital. And I'll tell you, people went so crazy. We did it at UMC Hospital here in town, the same hospital that took care of all the shooting victims, one of the several hospitals that did that. And they were so appreciative to see us come in That's with great. all that board vital, <laughs> those shirts that say, trust me, I'm a nurse, <laughs> and trust me, I'm almost a nurse. And then we, you gave away a ton of those shirts as part of the thing. Yeah. And the idea, again, is to, with a coupon for 25% off. And the, and the idea was let's engage together as a tribe in a fun way, give a tribute to nurses, but yeah. then also give them something actionable that they can help with their careers. Right. Are, were you surprised at the response to that video? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we I knew you had a big nurse following, but it was more, you know, it was more, you know, the emotional side that people, you know, people were commenting that it, you know, made them tear up and it really, it really resonated. So that was, that was pretty meaningful. We were worried for a minute because yeah. we're like, if we don't get this emotion right, <laughs> yeah. we're going to screw this whole thing up because Meet Virginia is an old song yeah. and like Train, who listens to Train? Apparently there are a lot of people yes. who still listen yeah, to Train. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so we were so <laughs> grateful to you guys for doing that. And um, one of the, the interesting outgrowths of that is that uh, the shirts were super popular. Very, yes. Really popular. <laughs> and yes. so the idea now is that you guys kindly, yes. and, and if, if I'm wrong, stop me. Okay. <laughs> so guys, <clears throat> what Board Vitals is agreeing to do now is if you sign up, and we'll put the links in the description on the website, etc. cetera, uh, if you sign up now, you'll get a 25% off coupon code for the mm -hmm. question banks that Board Vitals offers so that you can prepare. And this is doctors, medical students, nurses, PAs, RNs, surgical techs, mm -hmm. and some others. We'll put a list in the description. Yeah. You'll get that coupon. You'll also be entered for a drawing where you could win a Board Vitals bash. And what that means is the party you saw on the video, Meet Virginia, we'll put a link to that video as well. Board Vitals, if you win it from the lottery, they will come and give you that same party with all the gear and the food and the fun. And if you're a nurse yeah. and you win, they'll come do it for your hospital. If you're a med student and you win, they'll come do it for your med school. If you're a outpatient doctor's office and you win, they'll do it for your for your staff and your and your team. So it's amazing and it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm going to enter cuz I want to win the party, man, cuz <laughs> Logan eats a lot of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, I didn't get any of that pizza, by the way, Z, and I'm still <laughs> sad about it. I, I got to say, I had like seven slices. So when these guys went off to break, I was like, burr, burr. I'm eating board vitals pizza. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. <laughs> now, b one of the things that you are um, passionate about, too, is kind of giving back in a different way. And it's a way that really connects with me. It's mm -hmm. your Give Vax program. Can you tell yeah. me about that? Yeah, sure. So, so once, I mean, once the business had grown to a point where, you know, things were um, growing and we had a good support staff and I knew we had room to start, you know, giving back to, to charity. We we went through a lot of different ideas and, and what we kept coming back to is, you know, back when I was a medical student, I did a lot of volunteer work in Africa and Central America and mm. 
just saw a lot of children and families affected by vaccine preventable illnesses um, and also seeing vaccination rates go down in this country and, and you know really around the world um, something that struck us as an important cause so we started the give vax campaign and we donate a vaccine for every purchase made on our uh, platform and so we started this in I think partway into 2016 and we've donated almost 180,000 vaccines oh my gosh guys like for every <laughs> every person who does their course a vaccine goes to people who need it and honestly what's interesting is we're sending it to developing world and people who would kill for vaccines yeah. and there are still people in the u.s who decline them voluntarily it's uh, absolutely crazy right right <laughs> so we deep wow i mean that's tremendous and that was a, that was another reason that we were so excited to partner with you because we're so aligned in terms of what we're trying to do educate entertain do good in the world mm -hmm. and you're doing a much better job than we are because you're actually boots on the ground so we mm -hmm. in the z-pack want to support you on that mission here's a question so we had Paul Tierstein on the show. He's a big proponent of eliminating the maintenance of certification mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. with an, and, and, and substituting something alternative. He's a big fan of CME, which you guys do as well. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on maintenance of certification? We talked about the time that it takes out of doctors' uh, schedules, but part of your business is actually based around preparing people for those exams. What right, are your thoughts right. on that? Well, I think a, f a few of the boards have now rolled out these alternatives to um, ABPN, for example, and anesthesia boards. Um, so where they are sending out articles and you answer questions sort of on a monthly or bi-weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of, um, a lot of our, you know, we have a team of over 500 editors and writers. And so we get a lot of feedback from them and a lot of them have, are trying it. And a lot of the feedback has been that it's a pain <laughs> and it just feels like another hoop More to jump through yeah. instead of just taking the test every 10 years. Yeah. Um, and so I think it was when the idea was conceived, it seemed like it would be uh, less burdensome, but it's actually from the feedback we've gotten, it's more burdensome. So I think, and, and that's part of our overall mission. I think we, we started with just initial board prep, mm -hmm. and then we started with recertification, then CME, then now we offer a lot of the board specific um, mock credits and self-assessment credits. We're just trying to make everything easier where you can go and click your state, get everything you need, and, and make be it happen. done. So I guess your philosophy is, look, whatever they're gonna throw at you, you're yeah. going to try to help people save time preparing for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I do think that, you know, a few weeks of studying every 10 years overall is going to be less painful. Than, than having to do it every yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I tell you, yeah, I'm just like, nope, 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 nope. Not going to do this every month. Nope, uh-uh, not okay. <laughs> and now I've said that publicly in front of millions of people. <laughs> that means that ABIM is coming after me. <laughs> and you know what? I say bring it on. Come at me, bro. Actually, please don't do that. <laughs> I need to be board certified. Yes, and yeah. we like to be friends with the, the boards as yes, well. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, I think it's just just overall the life cycle of every health professional is a series of just hoops. Whether it's your hospital, you have to do cybersecurity training, or you know, whatever. It's constant. It's a constant barrage of of requirements, and yeah. so I think consolidating them is the best thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Dr. Paul, I have to say, like, I am a big admirer of everything that you've done. I know how hard Thanks. it is, and people, here's, okay, last question. <laughs> yeah. I can't resist, <laughs> because I get this a lot. People in healthcare are very conditioned mm -hmm. by family pressure, by societal expectations, et cetera, that medicine is this, nursing is this, being a PA is this. Yeah. When you deviate from that, when you do something different that is in line with your passion and your skill, you work where the Venn diagram overlaps, I love this, I'm good at this, and I can make a living doing mm -hmm. this. When you're standing in the center of that, if those Venn diagrams aren't all clinical practice, people freak out. Mm -hmm. So doctors get mad at me because I don't practice full time anymore. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are still freaked out. <laughs> and every now and again, I get a panicked call. <laughs> you know, I was looking through <laughs> Hospitalist magazine and I saw an opening. <laughs> 
in Las Vegas. Have you considered yes, that? Yes, yeah. I'm like, Dad, did you see that uh, the average census for that doctor is 40 patients? <laughs> yes. That they're based, based on RVUs, which means they're paid yeah. to do things to people. What yeah. part of my whole platform don't you understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But do you, what do you think we can advise to young medical students, nurses, people in healthcare who are trying to do something entrepreneurial mm -hmm. that will give them um, hope that it's doable and it's actually crucial that you do it? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think everyone should do whatever makes them happy and they're passionate about, but within, you know, obviously within the confines of having to survive right. um, financially. And so I think there's always an opportunity, there's always a few hours in the week that you can shave down your clinical time to work on something mm -hmm. that you're interested in non-clinically um, or, you know, side clinically. Side hustles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and there's so many, I mean, there's so many things now where there's, you know, plenty of opportunity for, for interesting side ventures or even things that are not related to medicine. I think it's important to, if you're an artist or a musician, to be able to have time in your week to do that so that you can doctor, nurse, podiatrist better. Better. Um, yeah. So that's, I think that's a, a good place to start and if it takes off, then go for it. And if not, then you're enjoying your, your time and you're still, you know, ha you still have your job to fall back on. And I think that's the nice thing about all health professions really is you, you always have the clinical practice to fall back on if, if something doesn't work out or if you decide you do want to go back, it's there. Um, so I and wouldn't worry I'm telling you, Dad, are you listening to her, okay? <laughs> she's, got, she's got big, big business. Also a lot of m medicine in the head. <laughs> And also, you know, got, got going to give a lot of great things to ZPAC. Speaking of which, Dr. Andrea Paul, co-founder of Board Vitals, is doing a crazy offer. If you saw our Meet Virginia video, remember, they are doing a offer right now where if you sign up, you get 25% off the question banks that they offer. And we're talking doctors, nurses, PAs, medical students, uh, podiatrists, mm -hmm. um, um, surgical techs. Uh, there are a lot, some, some little bit of dentistry too. Mm -hmm. And if you sign up, you get entered into a drawing to win a Board Vitals bash, like the party that they threw in Meet Virginia. And they'll come, they'll throw that party, and it will be dope. So sign up before it runs out because they only have limited slots. But it is a thrill to have you yeah, on the show. thank you so much. Are you going to enjoy Vegas while you're here? I'll try. It's I, only 100 one degrees today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dr. Paul, thank, thank you, you so much for Thanks your time. Thanks so much. Also, if you win that party, invite me, because I didn't get any of the pizza at the one that we threw, and it was totally lame, so. <laughs> you don't need more pizza, Tom Heineber. What you need is more love in hey, your life. That was, I'm doing the Jenny Craig, so <laughs> how dare you? Why did you mention Jenny Craig? They're not a sponsor, <laughs> okay? This is, it's not, we're not giving out free Jenny Craig here. <laughs> are they this even a thing anymore? Yeah, are they yeah. Even, are they even a thing? <laughs> I don't even think their business exists anymore. By the way, my, my drug of choice in terms of weight loss, curves. <laughs> because that's where I can rock it and be myself. CPAC, we're out. <laughs>